in uh, 83, bang, bang, I get a case of libel, Ed Asner, it wins the Cable Ace Award, I get a nomination, he gets a nomination, it wins the prize, Best Theatrical Presentation of the Year, now they're all lumped in the Emmy, under the Emmy. And while I'm shooting that in Toronto, I get a call saying, we're gonna, they're going to do Adam, which had been mentioned to me a year before. And I said, when? How? We can't do that now. And they said, oh, yeah, they're all set up in Houston. They just did uh, Bill, Mickey Rooney. So they have production. It's all set up. They're ready to go. And Linda Otto told me she was sitting frantic, afraid I might say no. And I said, really? I didn't know that. I would have asked for more money. No. Um, I read it. It was on my lap, sitting on the edge of the bed in the hotel in Toronto, and I called uh, Dick, well, his partner, and said, well, I guess I have to do this one. He said, oh, well, okay, I'll tell Linda, and they'll get it set up, and you're going to finish it another week or two, and then you'll go down to Houston. I said, oh, okay. What did you see in it? Good writing. What is the key to everything? Repeat after me. Good writing. All I hoped was that it was a good movie. The rest would take care of itself. And that's not my job. That's Linda's goal. It's John's and Reve's. But it's not mine. I'm an actor. I want it to be, I thought it was worth doing, not because of the message. I don't care about the message. The message is beyond me. The message isn't my job. It isn't mine to deliver. Um, Judy Dench says, about a play, you can't play the meaning of the play. Absolutely correct. I love one of my, one of my heroes corroborates what I've been thinking for so long. You can't play the meaning of the play. You can't play the meaning of the scene even. You can play the meaning of the moment and then put the moments together and then there will be a meaning in it, but you can't play that. You have to play truth to the best of your abilities. So I said, this will make a good movie, I think, if, and I said at the first read-through, if we don't act it. And they said, well, that's right, that's true. And the director was one of those people who don't interfere, Englishman. I like that. Don't interfere with me unless you know something I don't know, unless I'm missing something way off the mark. Leave me alone. Did you get to know John Walsh? Sure. Loved him. I remember the first time I met him coming across the lawn, over the hedge, and we hugged, liked each other immediately. You did a sequel to it, too, didn't you? Yeah, I didn't want to do that. Because sequels, as we all know, are notoriously what? Bad. I thought, well, it's pushing things. So two years later, I resisted, but how could I resist? How could I resist Linda and Alan and John and Reve? There was no way I could say no. But I, but I, it was okay that we did it. I thought it was going a little too far. But they were continuing the crusade. And I repeat, my main thrust is very clear. Is it a good movie? Is it a good movie? Is it a good production of the play? That's all. That is all. That is everything. The rest will take care of itself. Whatever resonance results, whatever mileage, as they like to say, it gets, Whatever other effects it has, added effects, additional effects, whatever other good it does or harm, you know, is not up to me. And nobody can predict that anyway. You can't actually aim for that. If you're doing that, then write an editorial, run for office, make speeches. But if you're doing film or theater, you have to live up to the characteristics, the demands of the theater piece or the film piece. That's very simple to me.